Oh, hey YouTube. Well, this YouTube video will probably land me in some hot mess because people don't really understand and I don't think I can explain this to them in a 10 minute video, but I will try to make this a little less complicated. Um, at least for, look, the whole issue is very complicated. That's what you need to know. The vast majority of Australians want to do the right thing. That's what you need to know and try to do the right thing. So, yeah. Um, anyway, look, the issue is um, people talk about Australians committing genocide against the Aborigine people. Well, it didn't really happen like that, okay? Um, short history lesson. I'll try and brush this over really quick with a paintbrush kind of deal. Like I said, it's very complicated. I can't cover this in 10 minutes. I just can't. It's not possible. Um, but basically, when the settlers came here, um, they brought across uh, old-fashioned ways, I guess. You could say they were from England where, you know, there was a... You could say there was... I guess, look, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. They weren't great people, all right? Um, they did bad things. And some of the things they brought, when you talk about genocide which killed off most of the Aboriginals at the time, was actually the common flu. Uh, believe it or not, the common flu, when you don't have a, any sort of defence against it, can be quite deadly. So, um, yeah, basically, um, that's what killed most of them. It wasn't actually like a, a bloodbath war. There was something like that in Tasmania. Not sure exactly the full history about that or why that happened, but... Just, I know it happened in Tasmania, but they didn't actually succeed. They're still Aborigines in um, Tasmania, so there you go. It wasn't, uh, yeah, even though they tried their hardest, they failed. So, yeah. And then there was this uh, consensus by the government, and it's actually quite doc well documented, that they figured that the Aboriginal people would just breed themselves out. Um, basically intermingle with white people enough and um, at some point the the bloodline becomes so diluted that it's it no longer exists it's something entirely different um, that was their thinking back then that's what they that's how they figured the problem would resolve itself as far as they considered aboriginals a problem obviously they are not a problem but that is that, that, that's how the government at the time thought. Um, <laughs> yeah, so basically that's... Um, now, for the last 50 odd years or so, or more, ever so slowly and ever so, uh, ever so often, um, the consensus of Australia is making things to improve what has happened to the Aboriginal people, right? So, um, one of the things is they lost their culture, um, and they've tried to bring that back in with whatever records they've got and whatever knowledge they could store, right? Because the Aboriginals, they passed it down, so that there was no written record, but um, basically, the Australian people have tried to record that for them, and... Um, Well, if you look, one thing you can say about Australians in this situation versus the rest of the world when something like this has happened, when there has been a native population and a foreign population has come in and, you know, things have not gone great. The Australians have actually made efforts to have reconciliation. One thing we haven't done is a treaty. I don't know why. Personally, that I think would be a big stepping stone as pretty much every other part of the world had a treaty of some kind um, and we didn't and it's something that the Aboriginals have always been very upset about and I don't blame them, but I'm not really sure why that's, uh, why that's the case. I think there's a, a thing with the government. You've got to remember... What the people want and what the government wants isn't necessarily totally different, but 
what the government want is is basically to say we we have no blame in this we can't be sued for anything so that's what you got to remember um, when you talk about things like treaties and uh, you know whatnots and admitting guilt that's, that's basically opening them up to being sued so that's basically why there's always been a stalemate and a stagnant what they tend to do is they and it, and it happens to a, a vast majority of the white population as well. Um, but the government is basically just going, just going to throw money at it. They, they put people on welfare system. And yeah, that's that's one thing. But it always keeps uh, that particular person dependent on the government because they're not taught to survive on their own without Centrelink or without welfare, I guess you could say. Now, that's... That's our fault. We should have made them, like, be a part of our society more in, in the same way. That's, look, that's, that's hindsight talking. I think most people would agree with that, to be honest. I don't think there would be many people that would say, look, most of us have to be dependent on ourselves, right? So that's, that's where that issue comes. That's where I'm raising that issue is just, you know, Welfare is not a cure. It is just a band-aid and it won't solve anything. All right. <laughs> but they just kind of figured that again, they'll just their bloodline will get so changed that you won't really see Aboriginal people anymore. That's what they think. So they think if they just keep throwing money at it, eventually it will just go away. Because they don't look, as far as the government's concerned, they don't want to deal with um the taboo issue of Aboriginal people. They don't want to reconcile with them. They don't want to solve any issues. The vast majority of Australians do. That's why when you see anything being done for Aboriginal people, you'll see there's a lot of community support and a big, yes, this is good um, kind of attitude. And you'll see a lot of turnout and you'll see a lot of things happen. Um, and so that, that kind of demonstrates where things are at. That the pe look, I, I think you'll even find that if you were to talk to a politician, they would say, "Look, behind closed doors, yes, we agree. There's actually nothing wrong with what you're saying, and that that's fair enough. But in the public eye, we can't say things like that because we'll lose our job. Because again, if they talk about this stuff and deal and actually try to deal with it, yeah, the the." They, uh, any politician out there that even raises the issue um, will just immediately get turfed out. That's, I don't know why. I wouldn't turf someone out because they raised a serious issue. I, I would be thinking someone actually wants to do their job and actually wants to make a difference in the community. That's what I would see, but I'm not a politician. So, <laughs> yeah. So, I, look, I have no problem saying talking about the, the issues at hand. And, yeah, and look, there, there's been a lot of uh, things bad done to the Aboriginal people, like, um, yeah, there was what the Catholic Church did. That was pretty bad. Um, then you've got what the, uh, the stolen generation. That was bad. I think at one point they even experiment, medically experimented on them. I can't remember what the experiment was about or why it was even being done in the first place, but I'm pretty sure something like that, like they were testing drugs or something like, I don't know. It was something like that. It was, it was not a good thing. It was, it was a bad thing. But like, again, in hindsight, we as a modern society can turn around and say that. But obviously back then it wasn't seen like that. It was a different world. And that's what you've got to remember a lot of the time. A lot of the things in history that we're seeing, uh, it, it, it is a different time, or a different way of thinking, a different group of people. And they didn't see the world the way we do. They don't have access to all the information that we do. They didn't, they didn't have interactions with each, like with everyone from around the world. They, they had nothing like that. You've got to remember that. These were different people. Um, I'm not saying what they, they did was right. I'm just saying that that you've got to take everything into context, and that's that's what you've got to do. 
Now, yeah, look, I, I, I find it very unfair that a lot of people bring up the issues of the Aboriginals uh, who, ha who know nothing about it, right? <clears throat> they don't have the slightest clue what they're talking about. They always bring it up is, is like a point of thing to attack Australians. Point is, guys, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm sorry, but you don't know what you're talking about. And it's a hugely complex issue. The one thing Australians do is we do try to make things right. And there's not really anything that'll ever change what happened or give back what was taken. No. But the fact is, is Australians are actually making an effort to do something. Maybe in 50 years time or so, maybe, maybe things will be all, all fine by then. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, like I said, you're talking about a hugely complex issue. No one really wants to tackle it. And every generation just wants to leave it till the next generation to deal with it. That's basically where things are at. Now, would there be, what would make a difference? Now, I've spoken to Aboriginal elders uh, um, in the past, and I asked them what would make a difference to them. Like, what would they want to see? And he just said to me, he said, look, he said, I know we're not going to be here forever. Um, but what I would like is for our stories to be told after we're gone. And I always thought that this could include white people. This could include immigrants from across the world. It doesn't matter. The Australian government should set up a website where you can tell your family story. Your story could just have your story on there, your life where you come from, how you got to who you are. It doesn't have to be long. It could just be, you know, a pa like a couple of paragraphs. But what I'm saying is like an encyclopedia of people's stories, everyone's stories. And ideally, yeah, it would be targeted towards the Aboriginal people to, to catalogue their stories, but I, I wouldn't want to exclude anyone from that. So I would say... Everyone that calls himself Australian has the right to put their story on the page. Um, could be about their family, could be about themselves, could be anything like that. And I think that would go a long way for reconciliation. Now, you might say, how does a website do that? It records all that information, you know. And then if people want to know about their lives, about their stories, they're there. You know, the whole thing is there. It's all recorded. And with the with the internet and the ability to have all this information out in the world, I think, like, honestly, I think it's, it's a perfect opportunity to take advantage of something like that. Put it this way, there are websites with human, about the, you know, medical research and the human genome and the different, like, things that we learn about that. The amount of information on uh, on, and the websites are, are things like Omen and, and things like that. And where, the websites that I'm talking about have billions, and I mean billions, of information. Billions. So, yeah, so the, the power of the internet, is all I'm saying is that the amount of information that's out there, it's not hard to imagine that an entire country could catalogue everyone's stories just saying and uh yeah and all and all you'd need to have would be like a like uh i guess like a family name and then um where you're born and uh yeah a a and that kind of thing like it wouldn't have to be that complicated jeez anyway look that's what i'm saying Think whatever you want. That's my two cents on that issue. And hope you're all well. Peace out.